I, I write about this a fair bit in 12 Rules for Life. There's a chapter, I think it's chapter 9, I think that's right. Uh, assume that the person that you're listening to knows something you don't. It's kind of a derivation of some, of some things that I learned from Carl Rogers. He, he became a le leading light in humanistic psychology, and he was really interested in the preconditions for therapeutic conversation. If you were going to engage in the process of therapy with a client that the client had to bring to the session before he or she arrived the willingness to make things better. That would be the first thing. And I, I've done therapy that was court mandated. It's like, I wouldn't recommend that. That just doesn't work very well. You know, because you can't force someone to be better. They, they have to kind of come already thinking that there's a bunch of things they don't know and that their life could be better than it already is. And that's a good position to take when you're engaging in a conversation with someone. It's like, look, if you already know enough, more power to you, man. But if you're suffering more than you think is necessary, which is like highly probable, or, or more than you think is desirable, that means that you're way more ignorant than you need to be. Right? That's what it means. Because maybe you have an illness, you don't know how to cure it. Yeah. Maybe you're having a fight with someone, you don't know how to get out of it. Maybe you're failing at work and you don't know what to do about it. It's like you're ignorant. And, yeah, yeah. and no wonder, because yeah. people are ignorant. And so you might think, well, unless everything is just the way you want it to be, then you have something to learn. There's always the possibility that if you actually engaged in a conversation, you asked them questions and you tried to figure out what they thought, that you'd come away with one crumb of knowledge more than you had when you went into the conversation. And everyone has their own characteristic experience that's actually unique. And so if you have a real conversation yeah. with someone and they tell you what's unique about their experience, the probability that you can learn something from that is, it's, it's, well, it's, it's certain that you can. It's so enlightening, it teaches you a lot about the world. And so I think part of the reason that YouTube is killing television is partly because it's technologically advantageous. What's also interesting about it is that there seems to be a massive and relatively untapped market for actual conversation. It's because conversation is between people of goodwill who are trying to tell the truth, who are trying to aim at making things better, is unbelievably valuable. One of the things I learned in my clinical practice is that if the conversation wasn't interesting, then I was doing it wrong.